day, in a pointed gesture, sent its condolences to the family of a young Palestinian woman shot and killed yesterday by an Israeli soldier. Tonight, there have been more outbreaks of violence in the West Bank. Palestinians throwing rocks and stones have been fired on by soldiers using tear gas and rubber bullets. Before today's visit, Mr. Meller had already made clear his concern that the Israelis' latest offensive against the Palestinians. Their decision to deport nine Palestinians was a contravention of international law, he said. It would do nothing to solve the tension in the area. But today's scenes of squalor and deprivation in a camp marked by muddy lanes and open cesspools, but a home nevertheless for thousands of men, women and children, moved Mr. Miller to outright anger. Well, conditions here, I think, are, are uh, an, a, a, an affront to civilized values. Uh, it's appalling that a few miles up the coast there is prosperity, and here there is misery on a scale that uh, rivals anything anywhere in the world. I think these... Uh, I think Gaza is in a state of limbo at the moment. Twenty years after the occupation in which nothing is done to improve the lot of the people, what is their future here? Something has got to be done. The Israeli authorities cannot duck their responsibilities to these people. Then Mr. Meller, seemingly well aware of the attendant cameras and reporters, took issue with an army officer who had arrested a 14-year-old boy for throwing stones. His family claimed it was wrongful arrest. Uh, I saw nothing happening here that merited arresting any young children. Why were they arrested, uh, Mr. Meller? Why were they arrested? Because they, they got stones. But I saw no stones. No stones. I saw no stones. Why were they arrested? About the one hour. We got... They, the father children. said they were arrested just out, just when I arrived. Colonel, I think I you should look at this, Colonel. This doesn't, this is not good. Not good at all. Back in London this afternoon, the Israeli deputy ambassador defended the existence of the refugee camps. Any comparison between the situation that we found in the Gaza Strip and in Judea and Samaria in 1967 and the situation existing now will have to admit that tremendous improvements have been made in economic conditions, in social conditions, in health conditions, and so on. But we know that this is not the essence. The essence is, of course, a political solution, political settlement. Meanwhile, the violence has continued tonight. Troops fired tear gas and rubber bullets to disperse hundreds of Palestinians throwing rocks as part of a demonstration against the killing of a young woman by an Israeli soldier yesterday. Israel also continued to defend its decision to deport the nine Palestinians accused of being behind the unrest in the refugee camps. And that has led to further outbreaks of trouble elsewhere. We are confronted with a situation of disturbances of uh, violent demonstrations, of rock throwing, of homemade firebombs, of uh, Molotov cocktails. And uh, the first priority is to restore law and order. We are demonstrating utmost restraint whenever it is possible. But in some instances, it was not possible and force had to be used. Mr. Meller finished his day with a meeting with the Israeli Foreign Minister, Mr. Shimon Peres. High on the agenda was a request by the British Minister for Mr. Peres to continue to campaign for an international peace conference, a scheme that's already been stalled in the Israeli Knesset by the coalition government leader, Yitzhak Shamir, and by the hardliners opposed to any negotiations with the Palestinians. Israeli radio reported that Mr. Meller told Mr. Peres of his personal sorrow over what he saw in Gaza today. Earlier, I spoke to Mr. Meller about his visit today to Gaza, and I asked him first about those exchanges with the Israeli army officer over the arrested Palestinian youth. Was it proper for a visiting politician to intervene in that way? I merely raised with him the complaints that had been made. He presented himself in my path as I left, and it would have been unreal not to have had some exchange. And I asked him to take seriously the complaints that the... Uh, uh, that the people had made. But I trust that I'm not going to be the defendant in this matter. I would have thought the important issue for us to...